At only four years old, Shahad has already seen too much. Her nine-year-old brother died in front of her, says her grieving father. She watched him die just a meter away. The airstrike came close to killing Shahad, too. Her dad tells me her scalp was almost entirely ripped off her head. The trauma so severe, she only started speaking again recently. Her family and others made the dangerous journey out of Syria, ultimately taking shelter where they could, a half-built school in Sidon. With over half a million Syrians having already fled to Lebanon, finding a place to live here is extremely difficult. For those who took up refuge in that building, as unfortunate as they are, they're some of the luckier ones. They actually have a roof over their heads. In these dark hallways, children are the only bright spot, the only refugees that will approach a camera. They chant revolutionary slogans and aren't afraid to show their smiling faces. But for the elders, it's a different story. Heaven. Syria was heaven, this woman tells me. We want to go back to our homes. Every day here, it's like a year goes by. She's telling me that nine people live in this small room. They have every possession they were able to bring from Syria and whatever they've been able to acquire from here, all in here. The atmosphere, bleak. Among his desperate neighbors, this older man is a rarity, clinging to a small amount of hope his family will return home someday. But he's consumed with worry as we talk. The Syrian government might recognize him or his family in a news report, he tells me. Reprisals might be in store. Many who live here find out they need to cross back into Syria regularly. Despite the aid they receive, medical care and medicine in Lebanon is simply too expensive for them. The cruelest irony, returning to the war zone they escaped to help save their lives. Mohamed Jamjoum, CNN, Sidon, Lebanon.